Hey crafty people, I'm Sarah, also known as Craft Nerd because I'm a nerd who loves to craft. Over the years I've dabbled in most types of crafting, although for the past decade or so I've been doing primarily card making and mixed media art. I've recently embarked on a junk journaling journey that I hope you'll join me on. Today I'm going to be showing you ways to alter paper for junk journals or for card making using distress inks, distress oxide sprays, and distress mica sprays, and stencils. Let's get crafting! So today we are going to get our hands a little dirty, um, altering some pages using inks and stencils. So let's go over what you're going to need. I've grabbed a variety of stencils for my stash. This one's by All and Create, which I apparently didn't keep the packaging for this one. I've got another butterfly by them. This one is Spiral Checked. This is Lots of Dots. Heaps of Hexagon. So I'm probably going to use all of those. We'll see as we go. This is a Deco Art Americana stencil. This one is Hero Arts, and I don't recall the name, but I'll post a list below. But you should just use whatever stencils you have and love. And then I have a bunch of Tim Holtz stencils that I pulled out to play with. And I will list below everything I actually end up using. And then I have some memory box stencils that I don't think I've ever used. I've had them forever. This is Flower Power and Rhapsody. And these are by Crafters Workshop, which I really like their stencils too. They're, they're six by six and a really good price for them generally. So I grabbed a bunch of those stencils to play with. Um, but if you don't have stencils, you can actually make your own fairly easily. This one, which I don't know that I'm going to use, I made using my uh, Silhouette, and I assume if you have a Cricut, you can make stencils using your Cricut, Cricut as well. Um, and just need, use, if you want to use the stencil over and over again, you're going to want to use a craft plastic, um, but you can probably also get away with using just cardstock if you don't have any craft plastic on hand. May not work so great with sprays, which we're going to use, but it will be fine if you're using ink pads and a blending tool. These I used, created using dyes. This is a Sizzex mixed media dye, I think, but I just cut out the craft plastic with it. And I am, yes, I am in screen. Uh, this is another Sizzex dye. Um, that I created a stencil with. More dies that I just die, die cut it out of craft plastic and you have your very own stencil. You can also use punches. You can punch a bunch of circles, dots, whatever. I'm also gonna try experimenting with some doilies and see how that goes. Um, I have grabbed a variety of papers. 5 pound, this is the 65 pound, I think. Recollections, white, cream, craft, couple grays, and black. Um, that I'm going to be using. I also grabbed some of the Nina Solar White, which is 80 pound. Some of my Canson XL watercolor paper. Pulled out some of the ledger pages. Let's play with those and see how that works. And some pages out of some books I have that I picked up at um, a thrift store. So we're gonna experiment with those. Now for the inks, I'm gonna use a variety of Distress Spray Stain, Distress Mica Stain, Distress Oxide Spray, <laughs> and some Lindy's Stampin' Gang Sprays. Um, I will list whatever I end up using down below. Um, this one's Buccaneer Bay Blue. And you may be noticing I'm storing them differently on my table. Distress spray stains don't need to be shaken. You can store them upright. It's not an issue. Your mica stains, your oxides, and the Lindy 
damping gang because they've got mica in them should be stored on their side because you will see if you look at this that if i get it in camera that it separates out you can see the mica separating out so these need to be shaken and if you listen you can hear the little ball rattling in them the same with the ooh, that's coming unscrewed um here i'll grab i have not shaken this so you'll notice as i turn it you can see if I have it on screen, you can see that the mica separates out in the mica stains and the pigment separates out in your distress oxides. So they need to be shaken to get them mixed. And storing it on the side helps in two ways. One, it mixes faster when you have it all separated out in a long line along the bottom instead of just in the smaller space of the bottom if you have them upright. And it also tends to help keep the tube from the sprayer from clogging with the pigment or the mica, depending on what you're using. Now, spray stain is a translucent product. So I will not be using this on the darker cardstock because you won't see anything. But the mica and the distress oxides should show up on the darker papers. So, <clears throat> another word of caution. Do not be heavy handed with spraying if you are using lighter weight cardstock because it will soak the paper and the paper will rip. One other thing before we get started, I have my very own homemade splatter box. I just took apart a cardboard box to create a splatter box, which I will Try and show you it up and in situ. So that's what it looks like. And you can see it's kind of shiny on the side. Whoop, sorry about that. Um, I've covered it with clear plastic film. And this is just to protect, protect the rest of my desk from spray splattering everywhere um, because nobody wants to accidentally have ink on everything you all. <laughs> um, so I recommend having something or working in a space where if splatter gets somewhere, it won't cause grief and heartache. So we're going to start with this sheet first and that butterfly that I've been dying to use because I have an idea that I want to give a try using the lovely little butterfly. And we're going to see how this goes because this is 100% an experiment. Um, I'm not sure how well they're going to do what this is going to do with the spray stain. Well, I'm going to go distress stain in peacock feathers, which is one of my favorite colors. So I'm going to hold it fairly high up when I'm spraying. So you can't see my hand. It's like up on level with the camera because the closer you are when you spray, the more concentrated the ink's going to be. You're going to have like a big pooling puddle. And I because this is the 65 pound weight cardstock, do not want to put a ton of liquid on it. So I just want to make sure I spray everywhere. So the butterfly should leave a negative when I lift it up. You also notice I've got all this lovely ink on that stencil. I'm going to carefully lift it up and because there's a mess of ink on the table and I don't want to get it all over the other piece, I'm going to transfer it and flip it over and put it on another piece of cardstock so that we can save all this lovely, lovely ink. As you can see, we've got the beautiful butterfly going. I'm going to set this aside to let it dry on its own. I'm going to show you what I'm doing over here. I've flipped the butterfly over on a piece of paper and I'm going to take a brayer and gently roll it on top of the stencil to hopefully transfer the ink that was on the stencil onto another piece of paper. So we shall see 
how this works. I've never done this before. I'm hoping it's gonna work. Oh, I think I'm gonna like this. Ooh, yeah. I really like how that came out. Um, so now I've got two butterfly pages that just need to sit and dry and a butterfly stencil that needs to be rinsed off. We'll be right back because I meant to grab something to put that in. Hold on. Okay, now what about all of the splattered paint around here or ink? Well, this is part of why I lined it with plastic wrap is so that you can save all this ink. I'm just going to wet it and grab a couple scratch pieces of watercolor cardstock and pick up the ink left on my craft mat to use for some other project. If you don't want to do save all the ink, you can of course just wipe it up with a paper towel. And I will probably show you a project with inky paper towels. So don't necessarily throw it out if you get pretty ink colors all over your paper toweling. Um, I still use paper towels sometimes, but I've also gone to using paperless paper towels to do some of my cleanup. So. So yes, like I said, this is this is going to be a messy hand day. Um, my fingers are going to be a wreck, I'm sure. Um, if, if you do not like getting ink all over your hands, I think I still had some red on my face from an earlier project. Because I'm getting some red here and I have not sprayed any red today. Oh, you know what? I don't think I cleaned my splatter box off. Yep. After the last use. that So that is something to be aware of when using... I can't see what I'm doing. Distress inks. They are water reactive. I sprayed red ink. Oh, not quite a week ago. I used some lumberjack plaid and sprayed it. I got did not clean off my splatter box. I just sprayed it with water and it reactivated the lumberjack plaid red ink. So keep that in mind when using any distress products. They are very water reactive and will reactivate and create all in create um, spiral checked stencil on the craft cardstock. And I'm going to use Distress Mica Stain in Fresh Balsam. Now, the Fresh Balsam is one of the holiday colors in the Distress Mica Stain line, which are seasonal product. They come out for Halloween and for Christmas. In 2021, there were six Halloween colors and six Christmas colors. And then 2022, six Halloween colors, six Christmas colors. The 2021 colors will be available again this year at Halloween and Christmas. The 2022 will be available in 2024, although you might be able to still find them somewhere um, if a retailer still has them. So again, I'm going to spray from a goodly distance because I don't want to oversaturate my page. And I'm going to lift that sucker up. And I'm actually going to put it over here down at the bottom and try spraying some more. Lift it up. That one did not come out as good or as crisp, but that's okay. We're experimenting and playing. I am, however, going to flip it over onto a piece of cardstock and prayer it off screen because it's easier that way. I'll be right back. So this is how it turned out brayered on. And of course the five and the two and the four are all backwards, but I'm not mad at that. <laughs> um, I think I may end up spraying the stencil again and stamping it like up in this corner. Um, see how that works. You could also spray the backside of it if you want to have your numbers correctly and lay it down and brayer it that way. Um, and again, we'll do some 
which I should have done when I had the camera off, clean up on aisle three. Be right back. All right, so I grabbed my deco art stencil and Lindy Stampin' Gangs. Violacious Violet. <clears throat> So this one, I'm going to try just to get it where we are stenciling and to help me out, I'm going to use the packaging from another stencil to kind of mask that area off. And again, I'm going to do, ooh, my nozzle is pointed towards me. So I just basically sprayed my hand. nozzle is a little bit clogged I think I don't know I'm making a an awful mess I'm glad I put the thing up got it all over my hands um <laughs> we're gonna see how well that worked somehow I don't know that it's gonna come out quite like I planned in my head well not bad Got a very nice impression on the mat. I'm gonna do it on the other side as well. <sighs> Actually, no, I'm not gonna do that right now because it again, there's an unholy mess right now. I'm going to clean up a mess. Okay, so I'm pulling out the doily. We'll see how this goes. Some black cardstock and distress oxide kitsch flamingo. So we'll see what happens with this one. I'm going to be trying the very, oh, that is bright. I don't know that I've used Kitsch Flamingo Distress Oxide spray before. It is very bright. Ooh. All right. I'm going to gently peel up our doily because it is very delicate because it's paper and it's a lightweight paper and see what we've got. Ooh, I like that. That came out pretty good. Um, and I have to go find some space to put this. And like I said, the Distress Oxides will show up on a black cardstock. Um, distress Spray Inks will not because they are translucent. So when I grabbed the Kitsch Flamingo, I had really been wanting to find, grab the abandoned Coral Distress Oxide. Um, but since I really liked how that came out, I figured we'd do another doily and this is on a mid-tone gray, not a hand of gray, in the stack that I grabbed. And actually, I do have a darker gray. Let's go with a darker gray. And this is also coming out very bright looking. And the big reveal. Ta-da! Of course, if you are impatient and want your papers dry now, um, you can always grab a heat tool and use that to dry the papers. All right, I grabbed a piece of cream cardstock and I'm gonna try another of the Lindy's Stampin' Gangs. Starburst, Starburst sprays, say that 10 times fast, in Tibetan Poppy Teal, which I love this color. Um, so hopefully we will not have any clogs or issues. Good shake. Isn't that just a gorgeous color? Hey, that one came out much better. All right. Let's pull that off. Ta-da. And I have no space left for drying it. Then we'll pull up this one. Ta-da! I really like how the boilers are working out. Like this was definitely an experiment I was gonna try, and I'm enjoying the doily with the sprays. Um, and then we'll go put this over here. Be right back. So we're gonna switch gears and go with a less messy means of applying ink with stencils um and so i've got this is cubist by the crafter workshop and i'm gonna grab some distress uncharted mariner distress ink 
um and a makeup blending brush i got these off of amazon relatively inexpensively you can find them at craft stores they're they're really popular now for stenciling and they're great i love them but if you don't have brushes like these i also have uh, these which i got from scrapbook.com they are lovely and i really like them the only problem is is these go for a much subtler color it takes a lot more to get color on when using these brushes than these brushes or if you've got these type of applicators or these or these use them i use those for years I like the brushes better. I think it gives a evener coverage and I get less like dark, gloppy, unblendable splotches, which I tend to have happen when I use um, these, which I'm hoping I'm on camera as I'm doing this because I've got the thing pulled out so you can see the page and I can't really see what's going on on my camera. So just rub the brush on the ink pad and add some stenciling. And the nice thing with this method is you can partially stencil. So you don't have to do like the whole stencil. You can just go and in that spot do some stenciling. Come over here and add a patch of stenciling. And so you can randomly stencil in various spots on the page. So that you can add some interest to your page and so I'm doing this on Uncharted Mariner right now and getting some lovely blues in here but we can switch colors easily enough let's shift over here and I'm gonna grab I have a variety of these brushes so that I have them kind of color coded. So I use the brown with the brown brush. The blue brush has, you know, I tend not to clean them. It really doesn't harm your ink pads. Occasionally it might impact the color you get on the page. But see that? I kind of like how that ended up coming out. Can you see that? Where you've got a little bit of the blue from left on from the stencil mixed with the brown. So let's do a little bit more. And I don't know if I told you, this is Distress Tea Dye. So it's a lighter brown than say Vintage Photo, Ground Espresso, any of the other um, browns. And I really like how it looks with the Uncharted Mariner. I think they blend nicely together, create some interest. That is, I like how that came out too. Um, let's do this section down here. And so I'm just gonna go around and add some random cubes to this piece of paper to make it a little bit more interesting than it was. Some more down there. And I'm gonna use a spot where there's more blue on there. So we get some blue in there. And because this is drier, what I will probably do is flip this over and do some stenciling on the back. But I think I'm gonna do a different stencil for the back. Let's add a little bit more blue over here. I think I'm gonna go right over that spot. Some brown. So this is just play around. See, yeah, there's definitely some blue now on this brush. I may clean it. Um, you're not going to want to clean it while you're playing because they take a while to dry. So I would not recommend cleaning while you're, if you're still planning on using the brushes because it's going to be a sudden soggy mess. All right, I'm going to grab for this side the Houndstooth by Crafters Workshop. And I'm going to start with some browns this time. Again, just pick up ink from the pad, stencil a little bit of the stencil. Like that. I love the hound's tooth. Um, it's one of my favorite patterns. I'm gonna go in and just randomly 
stencil around the page. And it's nice if you do like dark and then have a little bit lighter coming out as you go because you've used, you know, you've applied the ink and as you spread it out, you have less ink on the brush. And so you get a fainter impression as you go so that you get, I don't know how well you can see that, but see, you can see here it's darker in the center and it fades out. I really like how that looks. Um, let's get some Uncharted Mariner mixed in. So this is a good way you can do both sides with this because um, it's less wet and messy versus using the sprays. A little hard at the edge. I think I'm going to come back with the brown and do it at a slightly different angle because I've used the corner of the stencil. So watch for things like that. <laughs> the Uncharted Mariner pad is a newer pad that I have, so it is very juicy and goes on very dark in spots. But again, I like the variation on the colors. Um, a little bit over here. If you don't want it as intense you can let's see if i can do this do it off to the side a little bit to take some of the ink off the brush before you take it to paper there we go maybe and i'm not even going to re-ink this one because i want it definitely a little bit lighter and fainter some there now i'm going to come back in with some more brown Especially in the spot where I got that hard edge I didn't particularly like. I'm just going to add some brown in. See if I can soften that edge up a little bit. And you lose that hard edge by having some brown over there. So do a little bit more brown. And my tea dye is a less juicy. <laughs> stamp pad because I've had it for a while and probably could re-ink it. Um, that is one thing I really like about the Distress Inks is everything has a re-inker. So there's that page all done and relatively dry. Like you could go and use it for whatever you wanted to use it for right away. This one and let's go for some flowers. This is um, Memory Box. Flower Power. I don't know if I've ever used this stencil before. <laughs> so we're going to see how well this works with our little brushes. And I'm going to grab some Ripe Persimmon Distress Ink, which is a lovely orangey color. I'm going to see what we get with this sucker. This one, Lee, is more you're inking the space around the flowers with this style. Ooh, I kind of like that. <laughs> so again, I'm going to encourage you, like I did on the video with tea dyeing, to just play around with your stencils and your inks and just see what you get. I'm going to grab some bundled sage and see how that looks mixed in using the same stencil. Just put it in the in-between spots. So this is bundled sage distress ink. seems to be one of my drier ink pads because I'm not getting a lot of ink on there. Oh, I like those colors together. But so 
So that's one thing you can also do. You can overlap. You don't have to keep it perfectly segregated. So you get some interesting patterning with the overlaps. plans on completely covering the page, but I think that's what I'm going to end up doing because I'm really liking the overlapping, this color combination. Then I'm going to have to make note of it because I don't know that I've ever combined these two colors together before and I really, really, really like how they're coming out together. Um, the upside of just experimenting and playing is sometimes you find something you really like that you weren't expecting. I think I may come back in with some more of the bright persimmon in there, in that area, just to add some more interest. See, this was a complete and total experiment. I did not test this out before I got on camera. And we just started playing, and I am loving how this page is turning out. I just really like the two colors together, the overlaps. I think we can add a little more right persimmons here and some over there and see how we go. Let's get a nice dark section. Here, we're just gonna do like, oh, yeah, I think we're gonna do that one because I really like that flower in like the lighter color of not having added more ink, so it'll be a little bit lighter. I really like how this came out. <laughs> um, so, again, I said it before, I will say it again it's good to just pull out your stuff and play and experiment and I'm gonna go ahead and do the back side now <laughs> I should clean up my space because as you can see there's ink for me inking off the page and I got some blue on the back of that one so this is another memory box one called Rhapsody and we're just gonna start inking again I think I'm gonna go with the same two colors as I did last time um and I think I'm gonna make my life a little bit easier. I'm gonna grab my Wendy Vecchi's Make Art Station by Razor, which I like because it is magnetic. So I can take a couple magnets and plop them down. They will hold my stencil in place and I don't have to hold it in place. I'm because this is literally me just going around stenciling and probably boring you to tears at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and finish stenciling this off camera and I'll come back on and show you the results. Uh, I am back and I'm gonna do a couple pages using Distress Oxide inks and this is Abandoned Coral. Now one thing to keep in mind is this is recommended that if you are using your brushes with oxide inks, that after you're done, you do clean them off. Um, so after I'm done with this, I will wash this brush and it'll be out of use for a little while because they take a good long while to dry. Um, the stencil is Tim Holtz Collection THMS084. Um, and it's called Mosaic, and it's using the back of it. And I wanted to come back on and show you stenciling with this because the thing about Distress Oxides that is different from Distress Inks is that they oxidize when you apply water to them. And I've got this on the mat and I'm not using magnets because I'm crazy like that. So I wanted to show you some stenciling with this and then what happens when you get 
them wet. So I don't have as many uh, Distress Oxide ink pads as I do Distress inks because I've been a little slow to jump on the Distress Oxide bandwagon. And I will admit, I am not a full convert yet. I still don't really love them. Um, partly because I don't love the fact that they feel chalky after they dry. I'm gonna mix up my stencils and I'm gonna grab stone which came in the same set as the mosaic and it's THMSO86 and go in between with a different pattern. So that is something you can also do when you're playing with your stencils is do more than one stencil pattern on a piece. I'm going to show you what happens when you add some water and again this again this is a lighter paper it's only a 65 pound paper so I'm going to be judicious in my water application so I'm not going to spray directly on there I'm going to put a little water in my hand and use my fingers because I don't want to saturate this paper but I do want to get some water on there so I can get it to do the fun thing it does when you get it wet. And I'm gonna take a puddle off to the side and grab a paintbrush to splatter some more water on. seeing much oxidization. You know what? It's there. It's very, very faint because I'm very, being very judicious in my water application. So let's get a little bit more water on the page. Now let's see if you can see. I'm going to stand up so I can see what's going on on the screen and see if you can see. There, you can kind of see in here where it's lightening, lightening. That's from the application of the water. And so there's some spots. Now I'm hoping this just needs a little bit more time to dry and that it'll oxidize better over there. But you can see a few spots where it's the water's dried and it's lightened up. I think I may splatter it a few more times and come back and we'll see when it's fully dried how it's looking. Um, I also went ahead and did some more stenciling off camera with my Distress inks and I did this guy with some cracked pistachio and the all and create uh lots of dots and this is the heaps of hexagons so i just did some light stenciling on this side and then on the other side i stenciled part of the stencil and then went back over it with a different section of the stencil and did that over here so like the bigger dots are one part of the stencil and then the tiny dots are a different part of the stencil the ledger stencil by crafters workshop and did that in savaged patina and then i went in with distress vintage photo and used a couple of the tim holtz da, uh, stencils two different stencils so it's doing 
little splattery marks. And so these two stencils. So number 111 and 130 to get some splotchiness on there. And grabbed the Alton Create Flutterby, the smaller of my butterfly stencils. And on one side, I did it using uh, shaded lilac. And on the other, because I kind of liked it, but it was shaded lilac's a very light color. So I wanted something a little darker. So I did peacock feather. So we're just going to take a quick look through all of the various papers I stenciled because I did a bit more off camera. Um, I think I talked about this one being Savage Patina and Vintage Photo. And I didn't do the back. I need to go and do the back on that one. Show you the butterfly now that it is dry. This one is Cracked Pistachio with the All and Creates Hexagon and Dot stencil. This is Peacock Feather and Wilted Violet. Oh no, Shaded Lilac. This one's Wilted Violet. Um, <clears throat> and I did the same color on both sides and the book actually has the little person there. <laughs> this one I stamped with the Spiral Checked All and Create stencil after it had been sprayed with the Distress Stain, Mica Stain Fresh Balsam, I think. And again, forgot to do the back of that one. Some more of the dots on some music paper. And again, I think it's Unshattered Chartered Mariner and Tea Dye, because I really like that color combination. I stenciled the butterfly on this one using the brush and the ink pad for, I think, Uncharted Mariner. And then flipped the page, lightly misted the butterfly, flipped it over, and brayered it on to get the ink from that on there. This is another stencil I created using dyes. And I honestly do not remember which shade of green I used for this. Um, it, I think, might be Shabby Shutters, but I'm not 100% sure on that because it looks a little dark. And I inked the edges in tea dye so that you get nice brown edges and then stenciled in the middle. And I did it on both sides. You can see the lovely little rough edge it really stands out with the tea dye on it. So this is using the Lindy Stamping Gang Violaceous Violet. And um, let's see if you can get it. it. There you go. You can see the lovely purple tones in with the brown. So I had sprayed to get one image, sprayed it again to get a second one. And then this one, I think I went from doing that straight over to here without cleaning the stencil. And so we had a lot of bleed through and we have some lines. So I don't know, this may end up getting like cut apart so that I can use just the parts I like. I took the stencil and flipped it over and brayered it on so you get the stencil shape because there was so much of that lovely color on there. This is again, the fresh balsam I was stamping with it. And what I did was I did second and third generation stamping with which so I stamped it and then stamped it again and then stamped it a third time um, without adding more ink so just to get some interest on that page and again putting the stencil down brayering it on um, I really kind of like the look of it I think it adds some neat interest it's just a little plain around the edges so I'll probably trim that out don't think I showed you the second side after I finished stenciling this one, which again, I really love this color combo. And then this guy. And here I went back and did the second. Oh no, I did that on camera. So here's on the, and see, you can see when I hold it up and shake the lovely sparkle from the mica sprays. And let's see if I can get, you can kind of see some of the oxidization in here and over here from adding water, but it did not oxidize very much on this guy. Our doilies and the last doily one. And as a result of using the doilies as stencils, 
I also have now lovely dyed doilies that I'm going to end up using in some way, shape, or form. So again, just play around with your stencils, your inks, just experiment because you get all kinds of neat results. Um, and so I strongly encourage you to just play around. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And to be certain not to miss future videos, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching and happy crafting!